Bam. All right, guys. Up next, we have Richard Laruna, a.k.a. Gambler. He is the founder and CEO of PUA Training. Market leader in, like, on the planet right now, at least Europe and probably the United States, too. Uh, a friend of his who spoke at the convention two years in a row in the United States, Adam Lyons, you guys know him. And Gambler is basically the man in Europe that Adam's a, Adam is in the United States. Long story short, he's going to kick ass, and I appreciate you coming big time and supporting the event. Nice so, man. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, guys. All right. So what I want to give you, I've got like an hour and a half, something around that time. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to look at the whole four years that I've been training and learning this stuff. It's probably about four and a half years. And I'm going to condense it down into an hour and a half. So you might want to take notes. What I'm going to give you is not very much theory. I'm going to give you a lot of applicable, usable techniques. So if I'm teaching you something, it's probably something that you can go out tonight and use it. So that's going to be kind of the, you know, the structure behind the talk. So I started years and years ago, and I started by reading the game. And I was coming from a place where I was very shy, very bad socially. I was an introvert, and I didn't have many friends. Of course, I was terrible with women. So at 25 years old, I'd only kissed two girls. And I literally, you know, I didn't know the first thing about anything. My dates would be boring. I didn't know how to get a number. I didn't know how to go for the kiss. I wasn't confident, you know, stripping down in the bedroom and pleasuring a girl in bed. You know, I wasn't confident at any part of the pickup. So I had to learn all of it from scratch. And I started off like most people. You read the game and you go out, you try some routines. You know, who lies more, David Bowie opener, all of that stuff. But then some things started happening. And what I'm going to give you today are the real big things that I've learned that really helped me get good and that I don't think I would have just found out by chance. And I'm going to start with something that I call forcing IOIs and go into non-verbal game in general. So a lot of guys tell me, you know, how do I game in a really noisy club? Anyone, anyone struggle sometimes in really, really noisy places? You know, music pounding, the girls are like, what, what? You know, can't hear anything. And it's funny because I've gone from being exactly the same, from hating that kind of environment, to now I'd say it's my absolute favorite place. If I go out in London, you know, I want a game in the place. It's like after midnight, the music's pumping, it's packed, it's super loud, and there's no way you can have a conversation there. And the reason is that I love using all this nonverbal stuff because it is really, really cool. And it all started for me, I went on a holiday and I actually started in Sweden and I did a European tour with this guy who is still to this day the best guy that I've ever seen gaming. You know, he did some things when I was, when I was with him on this holiday, he did some things where I was watching him and I just couldn't believe it. I was like standing there shaking, you know, I just couldn't believe what he was doing. And still to this day he's the best guy that I've ever seen when it comes to escalating, leading, dominating, being sexual, all of that stuff. He recently started day game and he just goes out in the street, gets a girl back to the house, goes out in the street, gets a girl back to the house. And when I'd be in the nightclub with him, he'd say, oh, you know what, I want to get laid actually. I'm going to take that girl home. And I'd be like, yeah, come on. And he'll go and talk to the girl. Five minutes later, he's like, all right, see you later. And he's, you know, he's walking home with her. And he's literally the best guy I've ever seen doing it. His name is Steve. And we went on holiday and this is where I made my first big realization. So at that time, I was doing the traditional thing, you know, approach indirectly, you know, blah, 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 neg the target, all of this stuff, roughly following mystery method. But I was seeing Steve do stuff, and he wasn't following that. He'd approach a big group, but he'd just approach the hot girl, he'd take her out of that group, he'd kiss her, and then he'd leave. And I'd be like, what? You know, he didn't open the group, he didn't need a wingman, he never asked me to come in and wing him, he never seemed to, to hesitate. He always seemed totally confident in everything he was doing. And the funny thing was that it took me a while to realize because he never, he never taught me. I just hung out with him and I picked it all up. But I realized that he was doing a few things. And it all started with something that to this day is still probably one of the most important things I've learned and that is forcing IOIs and using nonverbal communication. So I'd be in the club with him and the first thing would be quite funny. He'd go on the dance floor and he'd do this really silly dance and he'd be there and he'd go like this like that. And what would happen? The girls would kind of look at him and laugh. Everyone in the room kind of thought that was quite silly. 
But what does it show? It shows quite a lot of confidence. It shows he doesn't take himself too seriously. So he's already, you know, showing some good qualities right there. But he's getting attention, right? So the girls are looking at him because he's, he's doing this crazy dance. They might even tap their friends and say, look at that guy, what's he doing? And when they'd look at him, he'd, he'd kind of do like that. He'd do a little point. He might do this. He might wave, might raise his drink. He'll do something that forces a response from them. He'd get their attention and then he'd provoke a reaction. Now, the way this works is who's, who's ever heard that mission where you go around a club and you introduce yourself to every girl, you cheers every girl, or, yeah? You've seen that, so you cheers every girl in the bar. It's quite a good one, you get your drink, walk around, oh, cheers, cheers, cheers. Now, if you think about that, if I went around this room right now and I shook everyone's hands, so go here, shake hands, go here, shake hands, Oh, all right, you know, go here, shake hands. All right, nice one. So what, what do we have? We have a response there that's pretty friendly, response there that's rude, yeah? And a response there that's friendly. So if I did it in the whole room, I'd be able to categorize all of you guys right away in how friendly you're gonna be to me, okay? So if you go around a bar and you cheers all the girls, some are kind of like, yeah, cheers, like that. And some are like, oh, cheers, yeah, have a good night. Which one is going to be more receptive if you actually approach? You know, the second one, right? First one, you can approach us still, but you're going to need more game. You're going to need to try, you know, maybe pull out some, some special tricks to get this one. She might be a bit bitchy, a bit tough. The nice thing is, you know that, so you know where to come in. You know where to calibrate your game to. You don't need to neg every girl. You don't need to use a compliment opener on every girl. You know, how do, how do you approach a girl? You know, what, you can't use a one-size-fits-all approach. But it's very difficult to come up with that in the time between you see her and you, you walk up to her. So what we want to do is we want to use the non-verbal way of opening, the forcing IOIs, so that we know exactly what kind of game we're going to need and exactly how quickly we can escalate. And we know that before we've even approached. So this was the first thing I, I, I saw, you know, I saw him do it. And I started to incorporate it into my game. And I'd be in somewhere, I'd get eye contact, and I'd start by, you know, I'd see the girl and I'd do that, and I'd point, and sometimes I might get the girl's attention, I might wave, or I might raise my drink. And what you're then looking for is you're looking for her response. So her response when you do something like you raise your glass or you wave, her response can be kind of really positive like that. It can be positive but slightly shy. So she kind of goes like that, but she likes it but she's shy. Or she could go, what's this guy doing? Like that. That's all. Those are the only responses she can give. If it's positive, you can go in. You can just say, hey, I'm Richard. How are you doing? Nice and easy. If it's negative, you can go in. But you know you're going to need to you know, be switched on and ready to pull something out, the, you know, out of your magic tricks or something. You know? You're going to have to come up with something there. She's going to be bitchy. She's going to be skeptical. She's not going to be friendly, so you're going to have to work harder. So the nice thing is, if I'm walking around a club and I'm constantly forcing IOIs, then what I'm getting from girls is a response that tells me how they're going to in interact with me. And the nice thing that that gives me is total confidence. So I can be walking around a club and I force an IOI. Does it take you know, much effort to do that? Is it going to give you approach anxiety? you know, to see a girl and just force a response. It's not even something you have to think about. You know, anyone that sees the girl and they're like, oh, I want to talk to her. Oh, she's with people. Oh, what kind of openness shall I use? Oh, no, can I, is she, is she with a guy? What's, what's going on? You don't need to have any of those questions in your head. You see the girl, you force the response, and you can walk around with total confidence because you're not going to have any approach anxiety about doing that. And once you force the response, you know exactly what level of game you need. You know, so from doing it for a while, you get more and more confident. You can also do things that before you even approach, they raise your value so that the response is more likely to be better. Now think about this. Let's say you're a girl in a club and a guy is walking towards you and you're like, okay, this guy's coming to hit on me. In that moment, you have to decide not just do I like him, but you have to think, do I want to spend the next few minutes talking to this guy? I'm actually having fun. Do I want to do that? My friends are going to see me talking to this guy. Do I want them to see that? You know, so you're fighting against a lot of different factors, not just whether she's interested or whether she's, you know, 
whether she wants to talk in that moment. When you do something non-verbal, she doesn't have time to process it. She doesn't need to think. She just thinks, you know, do I like this? Am I getting, you know, is, this, is it fun? Is it playful? Think about my friend dancing like that. And she looks and she smiles and he kind of does that. She's like, oh, this is, you know, this is fun. This is playful. This feels good. If he wasn't dancing and he just started walking towards her, she has to think about all this stuff and it makes it a lot more difficult. So the funny thing is, you can actually get a much higher success rate opening non-verbally than you would verbally. And I didn't realize it because it seems so simple. But from watching other guys, from training other guys, and from doing it for so long, I've realized that it's the best way to open bar none. And it's not just the guy Steve that did it. It's also a few of the other best PUAs that I've ever seen. They developed it as well. So there's a guy that I know that slept with 750 women and he slept with 100 Finnish girls. He had a bet um, that, you know, could he sleep with 100 Finnish girls in 10 years? And he did it. You know, he had to go to Finland a few times, but, you know, <laughs> he won the bet. You know, it's crazy. And he does it. And the funny thing is, all of these people developed it, you know, on their own, just from going out to clubs all the time. And sometimes you'll see a guy that's an amazing natural, and he'll be doing some of this stuff. So I developed that, and I started, you know, expanding on it. And it's got to the point now where all I try and do is walk around a club, generate as much value as possible, get girls to look at me, and then do something that forces a response. So it might just be, you know, something, facial expression, might be anything, and all I need is that small response. Now the response I need doesn't have to be like a really strong one, just a subtle thing in their face, and I'll know exactly what to do. But on top of this technique that is already super powerful, I've added a few things. And everything I teach you today is stuff that I do. It's stuff that I do having tried everything else, and it's stuff that I do having, you know, come from a background where I'm an introvert guy, that I'm, you know, I don't like um, talking to tons of people usually, and I don't like, you know, being the fun, sociable guy in the bar all the time, although it comes out of me sometimes, but it's not my natural state. My natural state is an introvert guy, you know, I'll be chilling with one or two friends, quite, you know, chilled and relaxed. And for me, this game works really, really well and is actually a positive over the guys that are really high energy. You know, it displays higher value. So the next thing I layered on, on top of this was a new type of opening. So I forced the, the IOI from a distance, so I've got some non-verbal interaction going on. And the next part of it is my verbal opener that I use. So a lot of situations are tough to directly walk up and, and start gaming. It might be a girl that is with a guy. It might be a girl who's ever been cock blocked by guys, by girls. Who's ever gone talk to a girl and then the guy comes in? Yeah. Who's ever been talking to a girl and it's going well and the girl likes you, but her friends drag her away and she has to go with them. We'd never go with them. You know, if, if our friends tried to drag us away when we were talking to a beautiful girl, we'd be like, I don't care, go away, you know? It's like, but come on, I've got no money. You, you have to take me home. I'm like, I don't care, just get lost, you know? I've known you for 10 years. It doesn't matter, I've met this hot girl, go away. You know, girls will never do that. So I used to have all of those situations happen. And the funny thing is that I can honestly tell you that for about a year and a half, I have not had that happen. I've not had a girl drag the girl that I'm interested away. I've not had any situation be destroyed by other people in the group. And I realized that before I realized what I was actually doing to make that happen. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to generate instant rapport with girls and I'm trying to blow out the rest of the group. So what I will do is I'll approach and I'll use something called a familiarity opener. I'll approach the girl and I'll say, hey, how have you been? And I'll say that loudly. And when I do that, what do the rest of the group think? You know, you know they think we know each other. So then they relax. The best way to explain this is, I've just split up with my girlfriend, you know, it's like a few weeks ago I split up, but imagine I got a super beautiful girlfriend and I was so into her and I, you know, I took her out to a nightclub and you're there and you're like, I want to steal his girlfriend. This is how you do it. 
<laughs> it's not going to happen, obviously, but, you know, I'm going to hide her away, but no. I'm out with my girlfriend. This is honestly how you could steal her, and it would work. Maybe I'm onto this, you know, if more people start doing it, it wouldn't work on me. But probably, you know, tonight, if I, if I was out with my girlfriend, it would work. So I'm out with my girlfriend, I'm in the club, and here's what happens. I notice a guy walking towards her, all right? And I'm like, oh, here we go. You know, he's kind of go on guard a little bit. You're like, oh, this guy's coming over. He's, he might be, you know, causing trouble. What's he going to say? What, what are you doing with this loser or something? You know, what's he going to come out with? And I see this guy approaching, but I don't instantly go on the offensive. I want to see what her response is. So I look at her, and if she's kind of like that, and she's like, why is this guy approaching? I'm like, okay, you know, I need to, you know, I can handle this. But if I look at her and she's kind of smiling and she's happy to see the guy, what do I think? I think, oh, okay, they know each other. And I might even let them talk. And then if he comes up, he says, hey, how have you been? 100% I'm going to let them talk. And I might even say, oh, listen, I'm just going to go bathroom. I'm just going to go get a drink and let them talk. He could have just approached her right there and then. And they could have never met before. But what I've missed is maybe he was at a distance and he kind of caught her attention and he kind of went, maybe said that, I like your shoes. Maybe just raised his drink. Maybe did a funny dance and she looks and they kind of, you know, smiled at for a second. Yeah? And I've missed that because the only people that will ever see this kind of nonverbal communication in a club are you and the girl. It's impossible. I mean, if I, if I do that, who am I waving to? You're looking at me, you'd have to instantly look back, you'd have to figure out who it was, you know? It wouldn't happen. So the only people that are aware of this communication is you and the girl. So that would be how you steal my girlfriend. And it's not even that difficult, is it? You'd be able to approach and in a situation where it would be absolutely impossible to do verbally, you'd need to do crazy things to do that verbally. I've used this a few times in situations where I couldn't use any other method. I've used it when there's like four people leaving a club and I like the last girl. All right, so she's in a group of four, they're all leaving a club and I like that one. And I'm like, shit, I missed her inside, you know, where was she? But there she is now. And I force the IOI and I say, oh, hey, how have you been? Like that. <coughs> the rest of the people, they want to go. It's like 3 a.m., they want to go home. You know, they want to catch a cab. And Instead of saying, no, come on, come on, come on, we've got to go, which is what would always happen if they thought that I was just trying to pick her up, they stood outside and waited, and they gave us five minutes, and that was long enough to get her number. Otherwise, it just wouldn't have happened. No way. They would have dragged her away. Why would they wait for, for her to be chatted up by some guy, some random guy? They would never do that. Another time, be in the club, and there's a girl with a guy, but something's not quite right. Seems like he's interested in her, but she's not so interested in him. But she's drinking some champagne, so, you know, maybe he's bought her a drink. And, you know, I'm looking at this, I'm like, hmm, I kind of want that girl. And force the IOI from a distance, come in, hey, how have you been? Haven't seen you for ages. Listen, Steve and Karen, they're in the other room. You know, you haven't seen them for ages, have you? You know, come and say hi. Um, we'll be back in a minute, mate. Take her in the other room, kiss her, take her number, and deliver her back to the, to the dude. You know, I'll see you later, go. You know? Again, impossible or very, very difficult to do verbally, but so, so simple to do non-verbally. What you're generating right from the beginning is a secret connection with the girl. That's sexy, right? You're doing something where she doesn't have to worry about the social pressure. Anyone that looks at that just thinks you know each other, so she doesn't have to worry about looking like a slag. You know exactly where to come in. You're not going to come in, you know, being really direct and she's going to be bitchy or you're not going to be, you know, coming in negging her and being, you know, cocky and stuff when she's going to be really friendly. You know exactly where to come in because you've set it up non-verbally. So, you know, I was out in Sweden last night. I'm like, okay, I'm in Sweden. Let's see if the same stuff works. Works even better here. The guys are less active, you know, they're less, um, the girls are more comfortable 
being out because they're not they seem to be less hit on there was one guy in the play in the bar i was at that was running around all the girls and he was the only one you know we didn't see too much going on it works even better here the girls are more friendly so that excuse won't work this works absolutely everywhere that i've tried it and it is really really simple to do once you're in set you can do a whole lot more we were doing this last night i was out with durham and a few guys in the team have started using the same techniques that I use, and he was doing it. So we were talking to four girls, and we see another girl. We get our attention like that. These girls think we know that girl. That girl responds positively, because we're with four girls, we've got higher value. Durham's like, all the girls are suddenly up for it, you know? I'm like, yeah, it's true, because we're, we're with these four girls, so everyone's paying attention. You know, who are those guys? From that position of power, you can set up all your next approaches. We were in that bar and there was no time from the point of, you know, when we first walked in, within a minute or two, we were talking to girls. We were talking to girls all night. We went with them to another club. So there's no point in the night where we kind of, you know, standing around. You know when you're in set and then it ends and then you're kind of in the bar and you're like, what do I do now? Anyone ever had that? Your value just drops. If you got that girl's number, she might then be looking at you being, hmm, maybe I made a mistake there. You know, note to self, don't answer when he calls, you know? And you might panic. So that never happened because all we were doing was we were stacking the IOI. So we're in, we're in the first set. We're setting up the next one there, maybe set up one there. And we're gauging how responsive they're all gonna be. So when we walk to that next girl, we're not kind of walking like, there's no nervousness because we know it's going to work. So we just stride over there with total confidence. The other guys in the bar can't do that because they're unsure. And if you're just a little bit unsure, it might show through in some way, you know, but it can have total confidence regardless of, you know, how confident you would usually be. You can be totally confident in this situation. If I took you to a bar and I said, Okay, approach that girl, she's gonna be bitchy, but if you talk to her for a minute, she might be nice. Approach that girl, she'll give you, you know, her number. That girl's just up for it, you know, you can take her to the bathroom in, in 10 minutes. You know, this one's got a boyfriend, but she'll be polite. If I told you all, the, all of that before you approach, you wouldn't have approach anxiety, you just walk straight in. But the nice thing is, with this technique, you can achieve the same result. And the other fantastic thing is it's just a reflex. It doesn't have to be anything you think about. If I get eye contact with a girl, I can honestly say, another thing that you know, is really surprising, again, in the past year and a half, I've never had a situation where I've had eye contact with a girl and I've missed the opportunity. A girl that I'm interested in and I'm leaving the club, I'm like, damn, why didn't I talk to that girl? You know, I think she might have been interested. I'm not sure, but you know, I think she was. I never have that anymore, but I bet all of you guys have had it because I had it so much, right? You guys had that? I can honestly say, you know, that's, that's been taken away. And it's all because every time I get that eye contact, I'm not just kind of looking at her or breaking it or smiling or something. I'm doing something that forces a reaction that tells me exactly where she's at. Because the reason you don't approach every time you get eye contact is because there's that little bit of doubt, isn't there? there's a little bit of doubt that she might be looking at someone else over your shoulder, that she might just be daydreaming, that she might just be looking and you're like, what, have I got something, you know? There's that little bit of doubt that holds you back. And then the next thing that happens is you're like, oh, what do I say, what opener should I use, who's she with, what's going on, you know? Have I got any condoms in my pocket, you know? Is, is my brother staying in the spare room? Or, you know, you start thinking all of this stuff and it fucks it up. When you go to pure instinct, and you're just doing something physical, you know, if you train martial arts and you get trained every day that someone punches you with their right hand and you block it with the left, punch with the right hand, block it with the left, punch with the right hand, block it. After a while, it's not, you're not thinking about it, you just move, you just move. And if I came up to you and just did it, you'd probably do it and hit me back and be like, oh sorry, I didn't mean to. You know, just be a reflex. What you can do is train it to be a reflex. Who would love the reflex that every time you see a girl you like, it just happens? You know, 
who would rather be, be there and be like, um, let me think about it for five minutes every time. Let me sometimes approach. Let me regret not approaching. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, sometimes I have stuff to do. Uh, if I approach too many people, I don't No, I said every that. time you want to. So if you're about to catch a plane, and they're like, last call, Mr. Richard LaRuina. And you're like, oh, shit, that girl, I'm going in. <laughs> Richard LaRuina, your bags have been offloaded. <laughs> You've missed the conference. Everyone will be waiting. Yeah, it's, you know, that's stupid. I'm oh, saying okay, every yeah. time you want to and no regrets. So, you know, I know that my life before I had so many regrets. And now it's nice to know that that's not going to happen anymore. So those were two massive things that I learned. And... To recap, forcing IOIs, familiarity opening, and IOI stacking. This is like the essence of nonverbal game, but I try and do as much as possible. I do very little verbal stuff. The next thing I'd like to talk about, which was the next thing I realized, was all of the things to do with escalation. And again, this was an area that I was absolutely terrible in. I used to just stand there, never, never touch girls, ne never keno, um, go for the kiss after like a week or, or a month, you know. Even if they were into me right away, I'd take ages, you know, I'd never go for things. And now, what I do is I escalate from the moment I see them. And I escalate in a very, very smooth way, which means that I could kiss them in five seconds, I could kiss them in five minutes, or I could kiss them in an hour, but I'm going to kiss them at the earliest possible opportunity, and I will not miss it. And the reason is due to the way that I'm escalating. Could I have a demonstration subject, please? <laughs> no, I'll stop right before. <laughs> you might try and kiss me when I do it, but it's not. Try and control yourself. All right, so traditionally, <laughs> don't steal the show here. <laughs> so traditional pickup methods, when it comes to going for the kiss, they really didn't give me the tools that I needed. I was out in the field and I'd be talking to a girl, it's going well, and in my head I'd be like, okay, I need to say that thing. And it's like, oh, you look like you're imagining kissing me. Or can I kiss you? Or if you were in kissing school, what grade would you get? You know, <laughs> who's heard some of those lines? Anyone use them? All right, so you're talking to a girl and you're not sure if she's interested or if she's just being polite, if she's got a boyfriend or if she's single. You're not sure about any of that stuff and you're just going to throw it all out there. And I'm not sure about you guys, but for me, that created a lot of moments where I was, you know, drum rolls there and, you know, loads of pressures building up. And are you really going to do it smoothly in that situation? You might not do it at all. It's another case where you can miss those opportunities and have regrets. Right? So, I had to develop a bunch of new ways to escalate. <laughs> and they are not verbal, they are non-verbal. Okay, so what you say does not matter when it comes to this. And the funny thing is, you know, I've watched guys in field, you know, I've watched them, and I, I always have to think, why is it not working? And so what I've come up with is ways to escalate, you know, in every different situation. So I'm gonna give you a few of those situations. And the way I want you to think about it is I want you to think about traditional escalation as being an on-off switch. So you're not sexual, you're trying to kiss her. You're normal, you're sexual, like that. And it's a big moment. I want you to change from thinking of, of it like that, an on-off switch, and start thinking of it as a zero to a hundred scale. Okay, so I'm talking to a guy, where am I on that scale? You know, zero hopefully, right? I'm talking to a girl right before I kiss her and you're just feeling your heart's racing and you know, you're just feeling that sexual tension, it feels great. You're not a zero, okay? You're up near 80, 90, okay? And it works so much better than just that on off because what it means is you can do it bit by bit. A few different examples. First situation is that you escalate while you're talking. Now, if I'm having a normal conversation, maybe I've just come and talked to you and we're just being, you know, I'm just being sociable and then I decide that I, I'm actually sexually interested and I might want to go for the kiss. I'm going to start making a few changes. 
If you look at the way I'm talking now and you have to put it on the scale, you'd put it near zero because I could be talking to a guy, right? I could be talking to a family member. There is nothing in the way I'm talking that shows, you know, there's nothing sexual there at all. And so I need to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to slow down the way that I'm talking and I'm going to smooth it out. And I'm also going to look at her differently. So I might glance down at her mouth. <laughs> I'm such a sucker, aren't I? <laughs> and I'm going to look at her like I want her. So I'm not doing anything where she can, well, what are you doing? You're just looking at her, right? But you're going to look at her like you want her. Do you all realize that there's a difference between looking at your granny <laughs> and looking at a girl you really want to kiss? Would you both look at them like that? Or, no, you wouldn't. You're going to look at it like you want to. You're going to feel it inside. You want to kiss this girl. You want to do, I don't know, you know, I'm sure some of you want to do all kinds of things. But you're going to show her that. You're not going to tell her it. You're going to show her just by the way you look at her. You're not going to be groping her, grabbing at none of that stuff, just in the way you look at her. So it's very simple. It's just a few elements. You go from talking normally to just being a bit slower, a bit smoother changing the way you look at her. And the key thing that you need to do is to introduce some pauses. Because in that moment where you've got a pause and the eye contact, what have you got? Tension. Sexual tension. That's it. That is the definition of sexual tension. If you all write that down, it's a pause plus eye contact equals sexual tension. It's so simple. Now, most guys don't do that. They feel the tension. They do this. They're like, um, uh, yeah, so what about, <laughs> right? <coughs> Eat that tension up. You're a man. You need to handle it. And that, you cannot kiss a girl if you're like, oh yeah, so, you know, you're really pretty and I'd like to kiss you. Can I kiss? No eye contact. <laughs> you can't do it. You can't be like, oh yeah, the other day I was, I was walking around, it was really good, and I, yeah, I bought a sandwich, and then I you know, hopped on the subway, and I got out and went shopping. It's too fast, right? It's not at all sexual. You can't talk like that, and then suddenly kiss the girl. What you want to do is you want to slip her into this seductive vibe. And she's watched enough films, she's had enough boyfriends, Especially this one, no joke. <laughs> she, no, I'm joking. She's had enough boyfriends that she's felt that before. She's felt that moment where the sexual tension's there. And all you're looking for is that moment where her heart rate increases and you slip into that vibe. And it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a packed club, there's only you two there because you're in this bubble together. And all you do to do that, slow down, smooth out, change your eye contact and introduce pauses. However, who's ever met a girl that talks a lot? <laughs> Some women talk a lot. It's fine, you know, we might like it, but it makes it difficult to kiss a girl. You know, maybe, you know, you're telling me a story and I'm, I'm there and I'm like, okay, I wanna kiss you, finish the story, come on, go. oh no, another story, oh God, you know. It just keeps going on and on. How do, I, how do I do it? I can try and take control of the conversation, but I could also do something a little bit different. So do you want to just, you know, ramble on about anything? Um, okay. Well, last year I went to Japan and it was amazing. It's like the most amazing country in the world. Mm. Um, have you been? It's really, really beautiful. Mm. Uh, Tokyo is amazing. Um, but I kind of really like Kyoto. Mm. Would you like to go to Japan? <laughs> You're not bothered. Oh, it's pretty cool. It's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you, you lasted pretty long. We should do like a game show where they have to last as long as possible. <laughs> well, yeah. So she's talking, but I'm escalating. How's that possible? I'm not even touching her. What am I saying? I'm like, yeah, I don't care. I just want to kiss you. Yeah, all right. Oh, that's interesting. I just want to kiss you. All right, Japan, great. Could kiss you in Japan, or I could kiss you right now. All right, that, that's all I'm thinking. And she feels that. What happens? Her heart rate increases. What does it show? Confidence. It's not sleazy. You're not even touching her, right? It's totally safe, and it feels cool. It's good. Some situations that are really tough to escalate in, guys always mess up. 
and you can even escalate in those. So giving you two examples of how you can escalate when you're talking, when she's talking, what about when you're in a noisy club? Something that I always see happen is I'll look at a guy and a guy, I'm like, something's wrong there, something's gone wrong in this interaction, you know? He should be doing better than this, they've got nothing there, you know? I'm, I'm with my girl and it's, it's good, he's with the, his girl, it's just not happening. And the reason is that he'll be there and he'll, you know, it's a bit loud and he'll be talking in the ear, blah, 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 blah. And then she'll be talking, blah, 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 blah. And then, hmm, hmm, oh, that's good, hmm. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. What are we missing? Eye contact. Yeah, there's a zero, okay? So I realize that when I talk in a girl's ear, I still always keep the eye contact. So we've got eye contact when we're facing each other. I go towards the ear, I'm keeping eye contact. I'm listening. I'm keeping eye contact, so it never breaks, even when we're doing that. But still, there's more to it when it comes to this particular example. This is actually a really good situation to escalate, but it's a time when a lot of guys blow it. So if you think about it, let's go back to that zero to 100 scale, and let's talk about, you know, you're talking to your, your friend in the bar. You'd be in the bar and you'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, blah, 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 you know, did you see any of the World Cup yet? Oh, okay, cool, and then, you know, that's how you do it, okay, so that's zero. Now let's try and dial it up, you know, bit by bit and get close to 100, all right? So the next thing you might do is you might, you know, have a touch here, and you're talking there, and then she's talking there. So you just got a touch on, on the arm there. Oh, you should probably put this down, actually. So that, that would be a slight escalation. The next one is you might just get a bit closer and you might touch the other side, which means that you're, you're kind of more over her. So touch the other side, talk, 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 listen, 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 you know, mm -hmm, like that, talk, talk, talk. So again, it's a slight escalation. If you want to escalate more from that point, you'll do the next one where touching back of her head, talking in her ear, and you're a bit closer, and then you're listening like that. You would not do that with your friend, right? If you want to take it further than that, when you go to talk in the ear, let's come this way a bit, actually. I'm nervous. Oh, no, no, it's cool. I told you I'll <laughs> stop right at, the, right at the last minute. If you want to take it further than that, when you go to talk, you might look like you're going to kiss her, but you won't. So you'll go in, yeah, and then another thing is blah, 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 blah. And then she's talking. And then you might go to the other side. And go back and you'll be close and when you come back you might brush cheeks but do you see how when you go in it looks like you're you're going to kiss now what you get there is what what can sometimes happen if i just went in for the kiss what might a girl do exactly that so if i kind of go like i'm going for the kiss and then move to the side and she she might do one of a few things she might move back and i'm like okay she's not ready she might just be you know, stay in the same place, which means she's ready, or she might <laughs> kind of move into it even. I'm like, oh, here we go, you know, and then you know it's on right away. You don't know if you don't ask the questions, but you don't need to ask the questions verbally because that's kind of lame, isn't it? You know, you're just going to ask it physically in a way where you get the answer really simply. Now, the final thing that I would add, I would add a lot of when I'm talking to girls, I escalate with every part of my body. I use my feet, I use my legs, I use my hands, and I touch them in lots of different places as well. So the final thing I might do is I might make sure that when I'm talking to her, I've got some contact leg to leg, either here or inside. But I try and get that leg to leg contact. Can you tell them how does, I mean, just having that, let's say we were standing side by side, if yeah. you stand, I mean, having nothing, versus just our legs touching, how sexual would you call that contact? It's fairly sexual. It's pretty sexual, but all it is is a leg, right? It's not like a hand, you know, somewhere, you know, that might cause problems. It's just a leg touching a leg, but it is sexual. And the reason that it's sexual is there's no way on earth that you would do that with a male friend. So it's one of those touches that is non-ambiguous. What you're looking for when you're escalating is non-ambiguous touches and non-ambiguous communication. You want her heart rate to increase, you want her to start feeling something, but the way I do it, you're not doing anything where she can be like, whoa, what are you doing? Or not so fast, or any of that stuff. Because I don't get those reactions. I don't get those, you know, slow down or no, I don't get that stuff. 
because they only come if, you know, I'm talking to a girl and then I go, uh -huh, let's kiss like that and I kind of lunge in. I don't do that, so it doesn't happen. It never happens. If you escalate from zero to 100, one increment at a time, an increment every second or whatever, and you do it that smoothly, she's going to go with it. You heard earlier, probably, I'm sure you heard it all weekend, but Durham mentioned it, the yes ladder. <coughs> yeah? Are you English? Are you in Sweden? Yes, yes. Okay, he's standing in the room. Yes, do you want to kiss me? Yes, oh, uh oh. You know, that's what you've developed, you know. Um, use the analogy of when you put a frog in cold water and then turn the heat up and it stays there and dies because it's a gradual thing. But if you just threw him in there, he'd jump right out. So what you're doing with the girl is you're actually not giving her any situation where she has to decide yes or no. It just happens. And there's nothing she can do about it. She'll go with it. So you will get girls, and you'll be able to kiss girls that would definitely say no in many other situations. And so I talked about the first thing being verbal, and I talked about the second thing being escalation. And there's another element that I use when it comes to escalation that I think is really, really powerful. And we could do something about that. Let's, let's take a seat. <laughs> so we're sitting down in the club and I'm talking to you guys. And would you say that I'm talking to you in a sexual way? No. All right. And if we were having a conversation, I'm like, Oh yeah, you know, I'm in Sweden, I'm going to be here a few days. I'm going to Norway actually afterwards, oh. that's going to be cool. How would you characterize that interaction? You guys are friends. Yeah, so you'd put it like near a zero, right, in terms of sexual, sexual content. Let's imagine you were her friends in the club. What would you think of this interaction? Would you think that there's, it's pretty safe and you don't need to worry about her and, you know, she's not suddenly going to leave the club with me? Yeah? I think you look very relaxed. Cool. So, All so. right. So what was going on behind the... <laughs> he was secretly stroking my back. All right. <laughs> now, I told you I would demonstrate something, and there's a lot of you in the room, and you still all missed it. That means no one else in the club would see that. All right. Girls have a good girl part and a bad girl part. <laughs> They enjoy sex. They like men. It's exciting to meet a guy and to have him turn you on and all of that stuff. But they still say no. It doesn't make sense, does it? Well, it does because that's their good girl part. So they're always fighting between their good girl part and their bad girl part. Have you ever been in a situation where you know the girl wants it, but she won't give it, you know? She's there and, you know, she's... She maybe lets you kiss her, but she won't let you do anything else, even though you can tell she's turned on and she likes you. Anyone been in that situation? Good girl versus bad girl, right there, it's going on. What you're doing in this situation is you are not putting her in a situation where she needs to say yes or no. Okay, I'm going to be a bad girl. You're talking to the good girl and you're exciting the bad girl at the same time. You're not triggering those responses. Women need to say no, because men keep pushing, right? They keep pushing, and then there's some point where the woman says, no, stop. So she's conditioned with that response. Women are conditioned, you know, if you try and touch their boobs, they say, no, what are you doing? Or try and touch no, what are you doing? Hands down, the, no, what are you doing? Yeah, they're conditioned to do that, because this happens, you know, many, many times, and they get conditioned to say no at some point. What the man is doing there is he's, he's doing a full-on escalation. He's pushing hard, so she has, she, she has to react in some way. Otherwise, she'd be a bit of a slag, wouldn't she, if she just went, went along with it every time with every guy. So she gets conditioned to say no in a lot of situations. I'm not triggering any of those responses. I'm not triggering any of those alarms. If I were talking to her, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, blah, 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 and I'm going to, mm, mm, like this. She's like, oh, something's happening. He's getting excited. He's going to kiss me. Oh, better slow him down. Men are only after one thing. Oh, stop that. You know, you're moving fast. You know, stop, not in front of my friends. Million different examples of ways she might respond negatively to that if you do a full on escalation. However, when I do this, when I do what I call multi level communication, 
where I'm physically escalating and verbally I'm just being plain. Verbally I'm in control. Look at me, I'm, it's not like I'm, you know, seem really excited or I'm like, Ooh. So I seem like I'm under control. We're having a normal conversation, but she's enjoying it. So she doesn't feel like she needs to say anything. So she can quietly enjoy it. She knows that her friends aren't going to think she's bad. But we've got this secret thing going on, and that's really exciting, and it's turning her on, and it's going to work. And I remember we put a video on YouTube, and it's one where I, I interviewed Callum Best. He's like a... He's the son of George Best, the famous footballer. And in London, he kind of goes out to all the clubs and he gets free drinks and he's kind of a, a B-list celebrity in London. And I remember one time when we were in a, in a car, he was in the front seat with the driver and I was in the back seat with this girl. And he was having a conversation with us. We were all having a conversation. And I was talking very normally, but touching up her leg like that. And then I moved, I was touching on different, and I was like, oh, really, that's interesting, Callum, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then he was talking, I was like, mm, yeah, blah. I was like, what do you think about that? And all the time, I'm touching her up. And if you watch that interview, he says, one minute you were there with the girl, and one minute, you know, you'd gone, and you'd taken her back to the house. And that was a girl that he was interested in. But he didn't see it, he didn't know what was going on, because it was a secret communication between me and the girl. Now imagine, if we'd just been sitting there in front of all you guys and I'd carried on doing that, you know, think of, you know, what a turn on that is. That we're here in a packed room, but we've got this little sexual thing going on. But we're like, oh, really? So where are you from in England? Oh, interesting. <laughs> and you guys are like, what? This game's shit. You know, what's going on? <laughs> but there's that secret thing going on. So, I mean, all I was doing, if you wouldn't turn around, all I was doing is I was just like stroking here and you know, stroke up by the neck. You could even pull the hair and stuff. But it's, again, it's a touch that is, do that later. No, I'm joking. sorry. It's a touch that is not ambiguous, right? You would not touch a friend like that. But on the other hand, it's not something that she's going, oh, whoa, what are you doing? You touched my back. No, it's okay. You're allowed to touch a girl's back. You can put your arm around a girl as soon as you meet her, can't you? If you do it in the right way, you can't walk up to a girl and say, hey, how are you doing, and put your arm around her. Or you can, but not always. Um, but you can walk up to a girl and say, oh, hey, who are you, you here with these girls? Oh, cool. I'm, I'm with those, those guys over there. That guy's cool, actually. I have to introduce you later. You've put your arm around her straight away. So it's not a touch that is going to trigger any of those bad responses. Thank you, I think. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. So that was the next thing I learned. When it comes to escalation, escalate from the get-go right away. You start on zero, don't stay there. Don't try and make one big leap to 100. Start on zero and move up smoothly in a way that she will never reject you and that you get all of the answers to the questions of whether she wants to kiss you without actually going for it, you know, or without asking. We were with, with some girls last night, Durham and I, and I talked to him and I was like, that one's totally up for it. This one's really shy. She'd be a lot of hard work, but she'd probably be a good girlfriend. You know, this one, you know, she's kind of in the middle. And lo and behold, one of the girls got sick and had to go home. And the one that was really up for it, the two that were most up for it, they stayed. So within those first few minutes, I made that decision. And these girls left their friend, they let their friends go. And they stayed in the club with us because they wanted to be with us. And when the girl was kind of dancing with Durham and she was all, you know, totally up for it. But within five minutes, it was possible to classify. And that's only because you put on a little bit of pressure, create some sexual tension, and you see what happens. So two huge things I learned, guys. And honestly, it's responsible for tons and tons of you know, great times out, and like I said, no regrets, because you're always going to be doing it. You're always going to be opening. You're always going to be escalating. You're never going to have any situations where you blow it. And it just takes a little bit of practice. All the other benefits are that you never, you never need a wingman. You never need to occupy a group. 
You don't need to, because you're instantly isolating because they think you know her. You don't have to worry about getting rejected because of what her friends might think. You don't have to worry about her getting dragged away. You know, so it's just amazing. So that's kind of the end of that section that I wanted to teach. And I want to teach something else that's totally different. So if you've got any questions on all of the stuff that I covered, now would be the time. So, so there's no questions, so we'll carry on. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Uh, good stuff. One question. How do you handle two set then? Because if you're isolating, you leave one behind. Two set is slightly different. Oh, okay. It's the only... <laughs> yeah, sorry, I should have said that. <laughs> two set is slightly different because obviously the other girl can't do too much. Yeah, she's left behind. Yeah. The idea with a two set is that in a lot of cases, that girl will give you some time together, but you need to find out what the logistical situation is. I mean, if, if they live together and this one needs to take her home or something like that, then it's just worth getting a number. But in most cases, when it's a two set, I will try and keep both of them happy. And are you creating a sexual secret with both of them? or No, I mean, in a situation, <laughs> what, what I would do... <laughs> oh, that's a good thing, right? <laughs> there's the goal that I'm interested in, and there's the other one. The in the first 30 seconds, I want to make this other one um, kind of approve of me talking to that one and just get her you know, approval so she's not going to ruin it or cause any trouble. Then I will start to interact with this one and what I'm looking for is her response. So again, I'm going to escalate slowly and I want to see what she does. Now, you're talking to a girl in a two set, she could respond in a few different ways. She could give you her full attention and totally ignore her friend, in which case, you know, fine. Or she could be aware that she's ignoring her friends, that her friend's getting bored, so that you know, whatever it is, and she, she might be looking at the friends. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. In the second situation where she's aware of her friend and she keeps kind of looking at her, a number's best, or you want to take both of them and, you know, uh, talk to both of them, take them both somewhere else or whatever. But in the first situation, you can probably escalate with that one and the friend will just, you know, find another man or whatever. Question to you. Uh, question you. Uh, Richard, you were saying like uh, you're seeing in the club the the girl's ready for it or she's a little bit shy, because I find it very difficult to uh, give the right interpretation of the non-verbal signals of the f of the female, because maybe she looks weird, but then she thinks, uh, well, I'm a nice guy. Can you tell us something about how do you know if the girl's ready for it or not? Because Right, there's, there's a difficult. couple things. So the first is a good question, right? How do, you, how do you really interpret a girl's signals? First thing is that if you just look at her, if you've only got eye contact, and she kind of looks at you and then does that, right? so that's your eye contact, what does that tell you? Not very much at all. That's why you force the IOI. So if I see the girl and I do something like that, you're going to very easily be able to see how interested she is based on her response. You know, it will be something like that if it's negative, or it will be something like, you know, smiling and giving a positive response if, if it's good and if it's on. So by doing a stronger action, you don't need to be so good at reading women's signals. As you get better at it, your action can become less and less strong. So that makes sense. So now I, wouldn't, I would just use a facial expression. And just from that, I'd be able to tell. But in the beginning, I was doing something quite big. I see the gun doing a point or you know, doing some action that is quite strong. So start off with the strong actions and then take it down over time. The second thing is that I will try and escalate from the first moment. So if I forced an IOI with you and you've responded, I will walk up and from the moment that I start walking, I will be trying to escalate. Meaning I'll look at you and I'll try and look at you in a sexual way. If you go with it and you're comfortable with it, you might get kissed as soon as I get there. If you're not totally comfortable with it, I'm like, okay, I need to take a while longer. And I'll stop, I'll tone it down and then build it up as I'm interacting with her. So you really get the answer when you escalate and when you force a strong reaction with your opener. And huge mistake, this is another thing, you know, I, haven't, I only told you to write down one thing so far. I would write down this. You do not need any kind of signal from her apart from the absence of a negative one. All you're looking for 
is a red light. If there's a red light, you stop where you're at, on the level of escalation you're at. A red light meaning she moves back or, you know, she starts breaking eye contact and looking for her friends or something like that. That's your red light. But the funny thing is, girls give different IOIs. You can be talking to a girl and she touches her hair and you're like, did she just want to touch her hair or is that an IOI? You know, and you're, you're second guessing yourself. Some girls give different signals, they're ambiguous, you know, it's always tough. Some girls just like attention, you know, so they like to do all this stuff, but they don't really mean it. So what you're really looking for is just, is the red light there or not? Because I've talked to girls that just stand there like that and they don't give anything away. And you're like, well, you know, where's my signals? I've done all this amazing stuff. You haven't given me any IOIs. What's going on? But if I'm escalating and she's standing there, what does it mean? She's fine. She's holding eye contact. She's engaged. Yes, she doesn't need to touch her hair. She doesn't, you don't need any of that. So you don't need to be good at reading signals apart from the negative ones, which are really easy. So lean back, raise the energy level. So where's my friends gone? You know, I need to go to the toilet, whatever. You know, we all know the negative ones. They're really simple. And guys always ask, what are the female, you know, what are the IOIs? And we come up with these long lists, you know, if they touch that, if they point their feet towards you, if they ask your name, if they ask if you're sick. Yeah, of course, these are IOIs, but you do not need them. And if you look for them, and you only escalate when you get them, you're probably only getting 50% of the girls you could. So, does that answer the question a bit more? Nice one. Yeah, well, uh, you're talking a lot about, you know, um, using, uh, using like, uh, non-verbal signals, using a lot of your body language and all that. <laughs> but what would you suggest for, like, people like me? Because, you know, let's be honest, you know, uh, my body language is fairly, li fairly lim limited, even though I got all the necessary functions for bringing girls home. Uh <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so, what... <laughs> What would, what would you suggest because it's, uh, but, um, my gear is all right, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, what would you suggest for, you know, instead of this, because, you know, I, you know, I can't use as, as much body language as normal people can, you know. Sure, I mean, there's two ways to skin a cat, you know, so if, if you're talking to a girl and you're escalating physically and you're doing all this stuff, that's great, but there's another way to really blow a girl away, and that is with your verbal connection, so... If you can have an incredible conversation with her where she feels totally connected, that will achieve the same result of making her feel a lot. So you have to play to your strengths and that's what, that's what I would suggest. Yeah, but still in clubs and all that you won't be able to hear much. So uh, it would be hard to have the verbal thing and that's why you used the non-verbal thing, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, for a very noisy club. But like I said, there's, there's guys on our team in London that only do day game. In fact, they've got a website, daygame.com. It's all about day game. I hate day game, you know. I love night game, you know. So you have to play to your strengths. And what I used to do, anyone that read my book, they say, oh, wow, you're really good at connecting and you do all this. Yeah, I'm good at it, but I hardly use it anymore. But if I did more day game, if I had situations where I was in conversations with girls, I would bust out all that amazing conversational material. And in a nutshell, I don't know, if, how quickly could I teach my conversation stuff? It would normally take like a weekend. I'll try and do it in two minutes. Um, cool. All right. Who likes conversation stuff? I do it all the time. Do you, uh, do you guys talk sometimes? <laughs> no. Do you talk to girls? <laughs> it's, the thing is, it's total opposite of the escalation stuff. It's the complete opposite. But if you ever want to create a really powerful connection with a girl, deeply connect and make her feel like, wow, you know, that was like the most amazing date, meeting, first, you know, whatever, you know, of, that I've ever had in my life, then the conversation stuff can really do it. So, best way to explain it is like this. In your life, right now, if you had a big decision to make, you wanted to quit your job and go and study something, you wanted to go and travel the world, you wanted to do something really big. So think of a big decision that you might take in your life. 
You might tell a lot of people about it, but how many people would you genu genuinely talk to and really have that heart to heart and get their opinion on whether you should do it or not? How many in your life? One? Three? Anyone got higher than three? No? What that means is that you've got three people in your life that totally understand you, that you're connected with. And the reason you talk to them about this is because they would understand you and they would make the decision and they'd think about it from your perspective. So if I told you guys right now, I want to go and live in the jungle in Brazil, what do you think? Oh, don't go, man. It's got bugs there. Don't you want to go somewhere with hot girls, blah, blah, blah. It's dangerous, isn't it? You'd say whatever you think about it. That's not too useful to me because I'm the one that is thinking about doing it, right? So here in your opinion, relating to your life, oh, I could never leave my job. I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't mind. Maybe I can, you know? But if I talk to someone that knows me, they're going to answer it from my perspective. Oh, it's something you've always wanted to do. You know, you've worked really hard. It'd be great to do it. Do it now before, you know, because you want to settle down and have kids and stuff. So it's the right time to do it. They'd answer it from my perspective. And that's why that one, two or three people in your life, that's why you talk to them when you have a difficult decision to make. They are our soulmates or whatever they are, you know, lifelong friends, family members, people who really understand us. Guess what? You can get that with a girl within an hour. And you can put yourself in that category. I was talking to a girl in a strip club many months ago, and also last week, but in this particular situation, many months ago. And we had this situation where she told me, we got into a conversation, it started getting deeper and deeper, and then she started crying, and then she started asking my advice on stuff, and she told me that she'd moved to England, and her family and people, everyone was back home, she had no one she could talk to, and she's sorry that you know, she just poured it all out, but you know, she thinks that I'm already an important person in her life. She feels like she's known me for ages and she trusts me. And I was like, wow, you know, got to be careful with this, you know. But it is incredibly powerful. Here's how you do it, nuts and bolts technique. Be careful with this. It's really, really powerful stuff. Only use it on a girl that you really like. Don't use it just for fun. It's nasty. Please, honestly. If I'm telling you something about myself, I'm a pickup coach. You know, I travel around talk in front of audiences. I started my own business. I moved from Cambridge to London. I, you know, any, any fact about myself, something I like doing. You've got a problem with your brains that is going to stop you connecting with me until you've known me for a few months. And then it might be possible if we really got on well. And the thing is that any time you get a piece of information, you route it for a circuit in your brain which says, what do I know about this? OK, so if I say, I like playing golf, what are you thinking? You're thinking about, oh, I watch golf on TV. Oh, I played Tiger Woods game on the whatever, you know? I played crazy golf when I was on holiday. Or, oh, my brother plays golf, right? So anytime I say something, if a girl says, oh, I love you know, painting or dancing, all you're thinking about is your experience to that. If I say I love painting, who thinks about back to school when they were painting as a kid? You know, who thinks about some paintings you saw in an art gallery? Who thinks about your friend that is, does some drawing and they're really good at it and you wish you were? All right? You've related it to yourself, and it's, it's not your fault. It's all because of that circuit in your brain. That it's, that's, that's just the way it works. But you can train it to do something else. If I'm talking to a girl, I go in, and I see that she's pretty enough, and I want to talk to her. But I imagine that I've got this blank canvas, and I want to fill it all out and get all of the details and find out who she really is. Because I need to know, could this girl be my wife, or is she just some random chick that I might want to sleep with? And to answer that question, I need to dig and find out. And I might know within a minute, or I might need to keep building out the picture to really make sure and put her, you know, put her through her paces. And what this means is that I'm trying to find out all of the important stuff. So I need her to open up, and I need to connect with her. 
So anytime I get a piece of information from her, I'm trying to get to three key things. Emotions, motivations, and character traits. These are the essential ingredients of who you are. The funny thing is, people share the same emotions, right? Everyone has the same base set of emotions. I don't have different ones to you. We've all got the same ones. We can all understand each other, but we don't. So if we take these three things, emotions, motivations, and character traits, and let's say you go out tonight and you meet a girl in the bar and she tells you that she's moved to Sweden a few months ago from Argentina. All right, she tells you that. You could respond to that, oh, what do I know about Argentina? Uh, like that, or how you like in Sweden? Not really going anywhere there, are you, if you do that stuff? If you have in mind emotions, motivations, and character traits, what could we say about this girl? What could we say in terms of emotions about moving to another country? Scary. Scary, like the actual emotions, yeah. How's it, how would she feel doing it? Scary. Adventurous. Adventurous. That's a character trait. So you already got one, all right. But scary. Exciting, yeah, if it's just scary, you won't do it, right? Exciting, okay, so we've got a couple of emotions. Got one character trait, adventurous. Most people don't do that, do they? We all stay where, where we're born, right? We stay in the same place, stay in the same job, stay with the same friends. What does it say about her? You know, risk taker. Likes, you know, taking a chance, going for things. What might you wonder? You might wonder about her motivations. Why might she have done it? Mafia, people, you know, pushed away from home, danger, you know. You might meet people in London that, um, you know, when there's wars going on or something, they've come over from country because there's a war, they want to escape it, you know. Maybe they're running from something. What, what other motivations might there be? Adventure. Just to experience something, yeah. Job. Job, so it could be economic. They want to, you know, make the most possible in, in their life. They want to um, earn money and become successful so they can support their family or whatever, right? Now, that's actually the important stuff, isn't it? Not, oh, where are you from in Argentina? How do you like Sweden? What do you do, you know? That is the important stuff. We're getting to the gold there. So anytime I'm talking to a girl, I will be thinking, what does that make her feel? Why would she do it, motivation? And what type of person does that? Introvert, extrovert, adventurous, boring, you know, what type of person? Now, who's moved country? A couple of you. So you'd be good at answering that question. Anyone that has stayed in the same country their whole life, is it possible to still answer that question in the same way we just did? Yeah, you have to think about it. You have to put yourself in her place. So when I'm talking to a girl and she gives me a piece of information, I'm immediately thinking, she's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm 22 years old and I really like dancing. I, you know, I do dance classes. What am I thinking in my head? I'm not just thinking, oh, what type of dance? You know, I'm thinking, what is behind this? Emotions, motivations, character traits. Take character traits. You know, she's doing this thing She's not forced to do it anymore. She's probably busy with work and she still takes the time every week to go and dance. She's dedicated, you know? Who here has got something that they're dedicated to? They go to the gym or they do something all the time. All right, so you can identify with that. Even if you don't, you can still identify and understand it. And you might even like it, you might reward it. How does she feel when she's doing it? It's expressive, it's liberating, it's, you know, a change of her mental state. Do you have to be a good dancer? Do you have to have danced to understand it and be able to answer those questions? No, you don't. So all I'm doing, anytime I talk to a girl and I find out any piece of information, I want to think emotions, motivations, character traits, and I don't ask her, I ask myself, what type of person would do this? Why would they do it? And how would they feel doing it? And because we're all human, we're all the same underneath it all, 
we just express it differently, I can understand it. And that's how I could talk to a stripper for half an hour, not only distract her from all her money making and all of that stuff, but get her to feel totally connected within half an hour to a customer. And that's how I've met girls and they say, I feel like I've known you for three months in a few, you know, an hour or so on the first date. And that is how I would say that you can really blow a, a girl away because you can live your whole life and you're like one person, two person, three people that you'd actually talk to. I believe that if I sat down with any of you for an hour, you might ask my advice if you had something on your mind like that, a big decision. You might include me in that list of one, two or three people because when I've talked to girls, that's what they do. Question. I was going to teach something else. You're never going to see it now. But I, but I hope that was all right. <laughs> is there... No, there'll be new stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Is there in this technique a danger that you can uh, establish a good connection uh, of the girl thinking, well, this is an amazing friend. And if there is, how can you prevent it? I've got no problem getting in the friend zone with a girl. I think it's a, a very good thing because I know how to get out of it. And I would say that if you went out tonight and then you came tomorrow and you're like, oh, I went out, I didn't fuck any girls, but I met five girls that I might hang out with. So I don't know if I did too well. I'd be like, you probably did the best because those five girls are going to invite you out. They're going to socialize with you. They're going to introduce you to their friends and you probably won't even need to do any more cold approaching now because you've met these girls. They're going to look after your social life. So you bring a girl into, you know, to, to the friend zone and it's a position of power. If you gave me 10 supermodel friends, you know, I, I would never be doing cold approaches. I'm like, oh, your friend's in from New York. Let me guess, she's a model. <laughs> Great, let's go meet her. And she's like, this is Richard. He's the coolest, nicest guy in London. And she's like, Okay, you know, what else do I have to do? Escalate, you know? I'm safe, I'm social proof, so all of that stuff's taken care of, just from a good introduction from a girl. So friend zone is, is fantastic, if you know how to get out of it. Durham gave you a bunch of ways, and I would echo those. You know, I have a bunch of things I do, so I might meet a girl, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that I'm attractive to other women. I'm going to game other women in front of her and talk about other women if I've got stuff going on. And I will treat her as a friend. So I might be talking to her. And check out this. So I'm talking to Ratice there. And then I'm going to do this. What have I just done? Checked out another girl. You showed that you weren't interested in me. Checking out a girl in front of someone, you, it's fine to do in front of a friend, it's not fine to do in front of a girlfriend. Don't treat her like your girlfriend. You know? What does that tell you? He's sexually interested in women. Okay, why isn't he interested in me? Why is he checking this girl out? You meet her, instead of going, when you hug her, oh hi, mm, smell her perfume, oh, you know. Instead of doing that, hug her, say, hey, how are you doing? Pat, pat, pat. If I hugged you guys, you're not gonna go, like that to me, oh, you're gonna pat, pat, man, man hug, aren't you? That's how you hug a friend, do that to her. Just do a few things, get a go in the friend zone, it's easy. If I've got a go in the friend zone and I take her out to a bar with me, by the end of the night, that'll be, that'll be it. Because I've been a gentleman, I've been nice, I've connected, I've done all of the stuff to her, apart from the final bit, which is generate sexual tension and escalate. By her seeing me run around and do that with all these other girls, she's like, Wow, and she starts looking at me in a different way. And she's like, hang on, I'm better than those girls. And we get on so well. What's going on here? I need him, you know? And then, oh, it just happens. And there'll be some moment and I'll be like tickling her or something. And, you know, then I'll stop and I'll look at her. And there'll be that sexual tension there. And I'll kiss her and I'll say, you know what, we shouldn't do this, we're such good friends. Kiss her again. I don't know, it feels wrong, it's kind of nice, but it's, I think it's, it's wrong, isn't it? Kiss her more. You know, I hope this doesn't ruin the friendship, this is bad. You voice all the objections, but you carry on escalating. So, you know, friend zone is easy. It's like a one, two, three to get out of it. But to get a close female friend, 
is so beneficial to your life. So many times I've been out and you know, crazy things have happened. There's, there's this girl that got me laid three or four times. You know, this one girl that I met one time and made friends with her because she was just really nice. I was talking to a friend who was hot. She's less hot. Um, I think I slept with her once, but she was, you know, she was less hot. And we made friends because she was just so nice and so fun and she just put me in a good stand. And I'm like, you know what, you're fantastic. I'd love to go out and party with you. You're definitely coming with us next time we go out. We go out a few times and then she'd call me and she'd say, oh, Richard, I'm just in the area. Shall I stop in and say hi? We're just on our way to a club. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, come up. She comes up with this hot girl, happened to be Swedish, and we all sit there and she sees that I'm getting on well with this Swedish girl and she says, guys, I'm just going to go and buy some cigarettes. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> she leaves and doesn't come back. So she just delivered a girl to my house. And before that, I was doing all these stupid cold approaches, running around, 30, you know, 30, 40 girls a night. And I just thought, what an idiot I've been. You know? Just have a few female friends, and if they like you, and if they've got other female friends, which is you know, quite likely, they will introduce you and say, this is Richard, he's a lovely guy. And this girl's like, okay, well, I could go with all these random guys that could be dodgy, could be rapists, could be murderers, and she'll think I'm a slag for doing that. Or, you know, could go with this guy who she says is really nice and, you know, I know he's not gonna, he's not gonna be a murderer or anything because, you know, I've seen him on Facebook, so he must be okay, you know. <laughs> you know? We've got three mutual friends on Facebook, it's fine. <laughs> Nothing bad could happen there. It just makes it so easy and you only need, instead of needing, you know, this much game, you just need that much, just the escalation. So. Sorry for answering your question and five others, but there we go. Yeah, oh, sorry, I'm just like, yeah, we need to wrap it up, so another minute. No, one more question, and we gotta wrap All right, up. who's got the final? I wanna let you keep talking, but I'm so tight on time. Awesome. You missed something amazing as well, but it's like. No, man, I'm gonna watch it, dude, like everybody else, so I'm gonna get it. No, no, I mean, there's stuff I didn't teach, because I went off on conversation, What's but. Uh, that's not, I shouldn't tell you, I shouldn't tell you now. It's never before seen. <laughs> it's only on this pad. It only exists in my head and on this pad. <laughs> and that's it. I was just wondering about a possible scenario when you use this, this approach, when you pretend to know yeah. uh, the girl, if you, if you approach, you know, a group of people and you go and say, hi, have you, how have you been? And she likes, who the fuck are you? And, and, and they all, aren't you in a worse position than because now you're the guy? Yeah, that's ridiculous, but you wouldn't do that because what you've done is you set it up before the approach. Okay. So you're in a group of four, all right? If I just verbally walk up, that might happen. Um, th you might like me, but they don't and they get rid of me. All of these things are wild cards. And so, you know, you're not sure what's, what exactly is gonna happen. What I want to do is I want to get your attention and I want to force something from you from a distance. And then I've got a positive response. So, I mean, I've given a few examples of where I've used nonverbal stuff, but it really starts, you know, on the open. And then you, that doesn't matter because you know that she's going to be warm to you. I give an example of a situation when I was in a club and there was a beautiful girl in an exclusive club behind a table with drinks and with a bunch of guys and girls. And I looked at this, I was like, I really want that girl, but how the hell do I get in there? You know, it's absolutely impossible to get in there, there's no space. And if you're like, hey mate, can I sit? And he's like, no, I've paid for this table, get out. Or he just signal the security guy to, to get me out of there. So it's, it's pretty much impossible, it's super loud. What do you do? So I see the girl and she, she looks a bit sleepy. And I go like this. She's like, what? But she loves it, she's smiling. As I walk towards that girl, remember earlier when I talked about stealing my girlfriend? As I walk towards that girl, and they're like, who the fuck's this guy? And then they look at the girl, and they're like, oh, she knows him, because she's like. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, um, oh, hey, how have you been? Right, in front of the group. Oh, hey, mate, can I just sit here for a second, just to catch up, I won't, I won't stay long. I'm actually over there with some friends. I just, I'm Richard, by the way move up, I'm sitting next to the girl on this guy's table, and I'm like, oh, you know, and I'm 
doing things with her, but he thinks I know, I know already. I'm like, let's go and dance. We're just going to go and dance. Do you want to come and dance? I introduce you to my friends, blah, blah, blah. With some, I just whisper, I'm with some hot girls. Come on, no. He's like, oh, no. no. So you can go into a situation that's absolutely impossible, but you miss that first element. If you went out and tried it like that tonight, hey, how have you been? <laughs> what? <laughs> it wouldn't work. You need the first, the first piece of the puzzle there, which is to set it up non-verbally. And then it, it always works. Cool. So wrap? Yeah, wrap done. Awesome. Thank you.